Welcome back. This is the second part of lecture one. In the previous part, we learned about the set of complex numbers. In this part, we are going to learn about the algebraic structures on this set. So in math, the most fundamental objects are sets. So if you have the set of real numbers, we learned about this larger set, the set of complex numbers, and we learned we essentially can think of R as a subset of C. Right. Now we like to do algebra on these sets. So what does that mean? So if I pick two real numbers, say two and three, we can consider their sum, right? It would be another number, another real number, it would be five. We like to do the same thing with complex numbers. Let's say I pick two complex numbers. I don't know, let's say two plus three i and one plus four i. I want to be able to consider some of these. I want to say, what is the sum of these two numbers? So the way we like to define it is as follows. We like to consider the real parts, two and one, and look at their sum, which would be three, and then consider the imaginary parts, three and four. So three i plus four i would be seven i. So that's how we want to define the sum of two complex numbers. So if I have two complex numbers, z1 and z2 are two complex numbers, it means, say, z1 can be written as some real number. Let's denote that with x1 plus i another real number, let's show that with I, y1, and same for z2. z2 should be equal to x2 plus i, y2, for some x2 and y2 which are real, right? We define the sum of z1 and z2 to be x1 plus x2 plus i, y1 plus y2, right? So it's kind of like we consider the real part, look at their sum, and consider the imaginary part and look at their sum, right? So now we have the set of complex numbers, but we also have some addition on this set, right? So there are some basic axioms, some properties that this addition uh, satisfies. One is that if I consider three different complex numbers, let's say Z1, Z2, and z3 are three different complex numbers. If I look at the sum of the first two, z1 and z2 first, and then look at the addition of that with z3, it would be the same as if I first consider the sum of z2 and z3, and then consider their sum with z1. That, that, that would give us that, that gives us the same answer, right? So the order does not matter, right? We say the addition is associative. That's the word for this property. The other thing is that there is an identity element for addition. So consider zero as a real number plus i times zero. This is zero as a complex number. So if I consider the sum of zero with z for any complex number z, the sum would be z itself. It, adding things with zero does not change anything, right? So zero is like the identity for addition. So we have a zero in z, which doesn't do anything when we are adding that to other numbers, right? And the last thing is that any complex number has an additive inverse. So if I consider any z, which is x plus i, y, there is another complex number, minus z, denoted by minus z, which is minus x plus i times minus y. And the sum of these two numbers, z plus minus z, same as minus z plus z, is equal to zero. So any element has additive inverse, right? So the set of complex numbers has an addition, and this addition has these three properties. It's associative, it has the element zero, and it has additive inverse. 
So such an algebraic structure is called a group. We say C is a group. In abstract algebra, we call such numbers group, right? So R is also a group. R and addition is a group. It's a group and is a subset of C. In fact, it's a sub, right? But for instance, the set of natural numbers, well, if we define it as either 0, 1, 2, 3, or just 1, 2, 3, I mean, it doesn't matter much. This is not a group under addition, right? Because, for instance, what is the additive inverse of 2? It should be kind of minus 2, but minus 2 is not here, right? So this is not a group, but R and C are groups. Okay, so we are extending the group of real numbers to a larger the group of complex numbers. Now I want to introduce another group, and that's what is usually denoted with R2. R2 is the set of pairs of the form X and Y, where X and Y are real numbers. So it's like the flat plane, Euclidean plane, right? We have the X axis and we have Y axis. And I don't know, a point like A and B is A is somewhere, B is somewhere, the point A and B is here, right? So this R2 is a set, it also is a group. So if I pick two elements in R2, let's say one is X1, Y1, the other is X2, Y2, there is an addition and it's component wise. So we define the sum of these to be X1 plus X2, Y1 plus Y2, right? It is a group, you can see it's associative. The zero of R2 is the pair zero, zero, where the both X component and Y component are zero. And there is inverse. So if you have an X and Y, the additive inverse is minus X and minus Y, right? So now we have three examples of groups. We have R, we have C, and we have R2. These are all examples of groups. And they're actually closely related. So the point is that in math, sometimes some objects are kind of the same, but they just look different, right? For instance, think about integers. So minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. It's a set of integer, the set of integer numbers. We have addition here. It forms a group. Think about the same set, but suppose I'm just writing these elements in a different language. Let's say I use Roman numbers like this. Right. They look different, but mathematically they are the same. The addition is the same. So it doesn't matter if I consider one plus two upstairs here, one plus two would be three, or here, one plus two would still be three, right? They just look different. So being the same means there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between them. So minus three is the same as minus three, minus two is minus two, minus, minus one, zero, zero, et cetera. And this correspondence preserves the addition. So they are the same as groups. The essential point is that the set of complex numbers with addition is essentially the same as R2 with addition. If we just consider them as sets equipped with this addition structure, how, how does that work? So a complex number is of the form X plus YI. Just like upstairs here, where we, are, we have a correspondence between numbers in two different languages, here we can say X plus IY is another way of saying X, the pair X and Y in R2. That is the correspondence between these two sets, right? And it also preserves the addition, right? If I have two complex numbers and look at their sum as complex numbers, or think about them as pairs and look at their sum as pairs in R2, we get the same thing. So they are the same as groups. The technical word for that is that they are isomorphic as group.
So if they're essentially the same, why did we introduce new set of complex numbers? If it's just the same as R2, well, we could keep on working with R2. It's just real. It's two-dimensional instead of one-dimensional. But why did we define this set of complex numbers? What is the point?